Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Special Hobby. It's a kit in 170 second scale and it copies Master Schmidt BF109E7 in its drop version and as you can see this particular edition is named as a Brave in Sand and Snow. So we have a commercial sample here, it means this kit is the final shape of this release and you will get exactly the same stuff as what you will see in this video review so it will be interesting to see what has changed in today's version of this famous aircraft and why it might be a good choice if you would like to build this German aircraft in a small scale. So first of all I have to note that box size is typical for this brand here you can see comparison with my hand we have quite beautiful box art here as well and kit number is SH72462 here on the side you can see four marking options which are included into this kit I think that should be enough for a 170 second scale kit and obviously nobody stops you from getting some aftermarket options if you would like to and here on the opposite side we have some information about the manufacturer we also have some safety devices and QR code for the kit info page so this is a top opening box it should be easy to open and here is what we have inside and assembly manual is on the top all spruce and decal sheet they are packed together so of course we are going to start with the plastic parts and then gradually we'll move on to uh, the components as well it's a resealable plastic bag that's why it's easy to open and take out these parts place the decal sheet aside on clear sprue as well and start with gray plastic first so here we have the first gray plastic sprue there are two of them in total and as you can see this one packs almost all essential parts let's say because we have a fuselage house we have even the engine and one piece co-link we have wing ports and we have also external fuel tank so i suggest we zoom in as much as we can so that you can see what is actually included here and i would say external features are quite good for such tiny size just to give you an idea of the size here is comparison with my fingertip let's not forget about the scale of this model it is quite tiny just like real aircraft and it's even more i would say evident in 170 second scale note that uh, fuselage half is molded without this cooling section so that you can expose the engine if you would like to and this is quite surprising feature to find in this scale because usually this is more of a, I would say a traditional thing in a 148 scale nevertheless here we get it out of the box you don't have to get any resin upgrades you just use the standard parts and this is really cool even though it might be a bit tricky for some others in order to uh, streamline let's say the whole alignment of these parts but what is great is that we have this cooling section, uh, the cover, let's say, molded as a single piece part. It means that you won't have to glue two halves together, you just have one single part with no seams whatsoever and this is a really good feature to get out of the box here if i flip over this fuselage halves you can also notice the cockpit features on both halves obviously and this is also a good thing for this scale because in 170 second scale i wouldn't say that it's crucial to get the p parts but this stuff should be handy for out of the box build and maybe even for some sophisticated projects because it's a small sized model just to remind you here is the uh, size of the cockpit in comparison with my fingertips so it's not that huge and next we continue with the second gray plastic sprue just to remind you there are two of them in total so here we have all other minor parts which did not uh, fit on the first sprue so as you can see there are a lot of them some of them are provided in several versions for example this propeller hub is given in three versions so pay attention to which type you have to use with your aircraft and now i suggest we zoom in even closer so here you can see landing gear legs also landing gear panels we continue with landing gear wheels and some parts for the engine as i said engine should be quite detailed out of the box so it's worth investing your time into painting and weathering this part of the aircraft and maybe exposing it on your model but i know that some others would rather choose to hide it and to focus on the external features this is 
is their choice obviously here we continue with some cockpit parts note that the cockpit floor should be assembled with the separate rear bulkhead i would say this is a bit unusual for a bf109 kits because we are used to see the floor uh, together in uh, uh, one part here we continue with more panels for the fuselage. This is a lower fuselage uh, cooling panel. Next we continue with more engine parts, another landing gear wheel, exhaust stack, the oil uh, tub, and here we have also bottom air intake, which is also modded as a single piece part. So I would say this kit is well thought, so you don't have any nasty seams or gaps in the visible areas. The only thing which you should do is to carefully join fuselage halves, and as you remember, they had guiding elements inside, so it's not a difficult task in my opinion. Maybe just a bit of sanding will do, or maybe use the liquid glue from Tamiya for the better let's say welding of this seams together or halves together next we continue with the uh, clear plastic sprue i will zoom in a bit so it was packed into the separate plastic bag as you saw and we have uh, quite nice parts obviously you can copy the open cockpit with them so it's not an issue to expose all internals in the pilot workspace and again masks are not included so if you would like to cover this parts with masks you should either buy original mask set or cut all the stickers by yourself and it will be a bit cumbersome considering the design of the clear parts on BF109 so I would rather suggest to get an aftermarket set and focus on a bit more important things such as for example paintwork or something else in terms of details on your aircraft. Next we continue with another plastic bag. This one was dedicated to decals. So I will close the lenses so that you can see all the symbols. And decals, as far as you can see, it's not written where they were printed, but I would bet that they are coming from Edward maybe. And here you can see we have all necessary symbols for four marking options. We also have decals for the cockpit, seat belts and instrument panel. This is quite surprising and it should be enough for uh, those modellers who don't want to work with P parts they will just apply these decals and it will be visible through the canopy parts and of course we also have the stencils which is also a good thing even in such tiny scale it will be a I would say noticeable thing which is worth to spend your time on application of all these tiny symbols Next we continue with assembly manual, so this one is printed in form of small brochure, we have short history note in Czech and English. Next we continue with the parts map here and here as well, of course crosses mean that these parts will not be used, so pay attention to uh, use the right parts for your particular version. Assembly process starts obviously with the cockpit, so here we have to paint or pre-paint some parts in advance so pay attention so that you won't be stuck with some parts uh, being tricky to paint in the finished state then we gradually move on the or to the engine assembly so as you can see there are a lot of things to be installed here and there and of course you have to decide whether you would like to open the engine or not because here it will depend also how you modify the cooling parts as you can see there are some things to change next we continue with air intakes and wing assembly uh, wing mechanization is also molded separately so we have separate flaps and ailerons then we have the fuel tank and canopy parts and here we continue with the choice whether you would like to have open canopy or closed canopy and then we assemble propeller again choice will depend on the marking option you choose for your build now first marking option comes in this uh, I would say quite colorful camouflage the same uh, can be applied to this third marking but the second one is a bit different because it comes from just give me a second I will check so it comes from April 1941 but it was transferred to Africa North Africa in this time so that's why it is still in the standard camouflage as it was before the transfer and here we have fourth marking option this one is even more interesting because it comes in this sand color together with the camouflage here and i wonder if it was like this or maybe it just shows the no it's actually the real 
paintwork so it had it like this and it comes from August 1942 as you can see the right wing still was covered with the European camouflage. So, all in all, we get a quite interesting release from Special Hobby, which should be already available, and you can get it on official Special Hobby website. Of course, I'll be happy to hear your opinion about such release. Do not forget to write it here in the comment section below. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today, and bye.